We are, I'm so excited for this event today. We're joined by Caroline Crawford, a fellow Dreamers and Doers member and a seasoned marketing and communications expert with 13 years of experience to transform your approach to marketing and increase sales. We'll learn about gathering, about aligning your strategy with your business goals for maximum impact in today's saturated market. Converting followers into customers is a major challenge for many businesses. Business leaders often invest heavily in marketing without seeing any results. So this session is going to refine your strategic approach to help your efforts translate directly into business growth. Caroline helps business leaders align marketing initiatives effectively to achieve overarching business goals. And with 13 years of experience in marketing and communications, she has a successful track record of blending visionary thinking with practical integration. After seeing firsthand how the marketing industry fuels shiny object syndrome, Caroline founded Cultivate to address challenges like limited resources and market pressures. She is committed to supporting business leaders in adopting integrated marketing approaches that go beyond typical gimmicks. We are so excited to learn from you today, Caroline. We also know how valuable your time is. We're so grateful to you for investing in Dreamers and Doers and into the community in this way. And with that, I will very excitedly hand it over to you. Amazing. Thank you so much for that intro, Nicole. It was great. And I'm so excited to be here with all of you. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your very busy schedules and on a, on a Wednesday. So I hope this helps you get closer and more excited for Friday. Um, all right, I'm going to dive in because I want to leave. I have some slides I'll go over that will have some information. Um, but I do want to leave time for any questions or hot seat coaching if there's something on your mind around your specifically your marketing or and or sales, by all means, let me know. Um, so I'll just dive right in. I'm going to share my screen. All right. Can everyone see it? Okay, perfect. So, okay. Today is all about upgrading your marketing strategy and going from followers to conversions. And this, I've never done this, this specific presentation for anyone. This is exclusively for my dreamers and doers. So thank you all for being here today. All right, if my mouse will work. <laughs> there we go. So a little bit about me. Thank you, Nicole, for that intro. Um, just to go dive a little bit deeper. So Cultivate Communications is my company. Um, I founded it after 10 years in-house at companies. Um, I've been in marketing communications for just shy of 14 years. In January, I believe 14. So which is crazy, but I fell in love with marketing communications. Um, it's just been amazing. And first went to school for journalism because I loved storytelling and I loved seeing different angles. I love seeing how can something that feels so mundane feel relevant. And that really translates well into marketing. But ultimately I started Cultivate because I saw firsthand how the marketing industry can fuel shiny object syndrome, which I'm gonna talk all about today. Um, and just other factors that really hinders businesses and makes you feel invisible, especially when you feel like you don't have a lot of resources. So I'm all about scrappy marketing. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can leverage scrappy marketing today, too. Um, but ultimately, my passion and mission is to make sure that you know that you can build a brand, even if you feel like you're limited, even if you feel like you know, I don't have a big budget or I don't have any resources, it can be done. And I promise it, it I've seen it be successful. Um, my philosophy that you'll hear from me a lot today is I look at marketing and sales as one, everything under one umbrella. And so it's all connected and it's all intertwined with your business. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how to kind of shift your mindset to think that way and um, identify where you could be blocked in either marketing and or sales. So let's just dive right in. All right. Why are we here? Converting followers into customers is a huge challenge for so many businesses. And so when I thought of this idea, it kind of sparked from actually a friend of mine who was having this issue. And I was going through this, I was going through her you know, channels and her marketing. And I was like, you know, you're marketing technically, but you're not guiding the buyer journey. So that's what really today is all about. So we're going to do a little bit of a reality check. Focusing on growing your following because people think like if I had more followers or if I had a huge email list or if I had X, Y, and Z, then I'll get the sales. Well, yes, those do aid in sales, 
it doesn't guarantee sales. So it's that's why marketing and sales, while they're different, they are not the same. So shiny object syndrome is also very real in marketing. So if you've ever felt like, okay, I need to do beyond all these different channels, I need to do X, Y, and Z, I have to sign up for this course or this social media person said they can help me or this brand designer said they can help all the, the list is endless. You are not alone, but that is shiny object syndrome. So I like to reinforce my clients and myself and everyone I kind of come into contact with about, you know, how do you use discernment when you're kind of being thrown all these different things. And a huge one is the challenge that you may be facing in your marketing and sales may not actually be the issue at hand. That could just be a symptom where you may have a greater issue at play. So that's why to the right, what's hindering your market marketing growth. A lot of these are signs that I have seen time and time again to indicate that there may be a greater problem at play within your business, especially within your marketing and sales infrastructure. So that's what we're going to go over today and just see how, how can you refine your approach that's going to translate directly to your sales efforts. So quick recap of marketing. The simple principle of marketing, and I like to remind people of this because marketing can feel so complicated and so overwhelming. Ultimately, when you're feeling that way, I say stop marketing. Like in that, and a lot of people are like, what do you, what do you mean? Like I need marketing help. Don't make me stop marketing. And I say that because if it feels too complicated, take a quick breath, see where you are kind of overcomplicating the process and how you can scale. And we'll talk a little bit about that later on. But I just wanted to provide this quick reminder. Talking about your business in its simplicity is actively marketing for your business. Us talking right now, right? Like if you, you know, if Nicole starts telling me what she does, if Emily starts telling me what she does, that's you actively marketing, but that doesn't mean you're actively selling, right? So that's where I, why I wanted to provide a little bit of distinction and just remember that just because marketing does not equal sales, they do go hand in hand and they do aid each other. But I think sometimes a lot of people can get confused or not, or maybe confused is not the right word, but you know, they could feel like, okay, well, something's wrong with my marketing because I'm not getting sales, but that's why there may be blocks that it's hindering on both sides of the aisle. And so we're going to talk about ways to catch those blocks and under really understand the buyer journey. And then also some tactical optimization tricks to help you through. So let's understand how do we get people to convert? Putting simply, these are on the left, these are some ingredients that I like to call that make converting easier. So a loyal following, an engaged network, clear messaging, compelling offers, and then urgency if there is some. This could be like a limited time sale or something like that. The challenge is that that's hard to build. And the point of marketing is to build all of these ingredients. And that takes time. So I, and I say this, and on the next slide, I'm going to have some reality check minder, reminders for you. So don't get discouraged that when you're seeing people who are, they just drop something and immediately they're like, sell out. You know, that is something that maybe they have a few of these ingredients at hand to make it easier for them to get to that point. And I want to put that out there because if you don't have a loyal following, then your customers likely don't know who you are and won't buy for you. If you don't have an engaged network, your customers are checked out. And so you start to feel invisible. If you don't have clear messaging, then your customers are not sure what you're offering and who it's for. And then if you don't have some sort of relevance to the mix, your customers don't have an incentive to buy. So I just wanted to provide that kind of black and white comparison of why there's these ingredients that help aid in the conversion to buying and how, and how it actually represents itself or manifests itself in your sales. Because I think sometimes people are saying, um, and I've experienced this myself and I've experienced it with clients is that, you know, maybe you have a little bit of a following, but they're not really actively engaged. So how do you get people to buy if, the, if you're targeting people who are not actively engaged? So then the trick would be, how can I engage them versus how can I sell to them? 
So that those are like one example of little mindset shifts to make throughout. So really quick on the reality check, because I don't want you to see that that slide and say, well, I don't know if I have loyal following. I don't know if I have an engaged network. I don't know if I have X, Y, and Z. Don't worry. You have all of the power to build your dream brand and to grow your revenue, even if you're limited, even if you're just starting out from scratch, even if you've got none of that. You just have to see all of your limitations as creative opportunities. If you don't have an engaged network, like I said, how can I emphasize engagement versus selling right now? That may make it easier for me. It may require a little bit of legwork right now, but it may make it easier for me in the, in the future, right? So just a few reminders here. Marketing takes time and brand building is all about repetition over and over and over again. You have to pit, hit people in the head with what you've got and what is going to be valuable to them or what their challenges are. How can they get to know you? And that just comes with sometimes trial and error or sometimes experimentation or sometimes, you know, just doing the same thing over and over and over again. So don't get discouraged that it takes time because that's what it's supposed to do. The purpose of marketing, as I've mentioned before, is to build those ingredients. You want to build a loyal following. You want to build an engaged network. You want to do all of these things that make it easier to where you just drop something and you can kind of start to expect and predict what's going to come through. So you do not have to have all of these ingredients to be successful. You just have to prioritize in the bits and pieces within your marketing strategy to manage those expectations to know what you're investing in and to get create like I said see those limitations as create as creative opportunities right how can I you know if I'm not having a loyal following how can I build my email list to generate a loyal following and therefore I'm working with more warm leads versus cold ones and that's a reminder if you feel behind do not this is what triggers shiny object syndrome over and over and over again, because people, you're, you're, there's so much noise out there. You're seeing someone else, you know, kind of surpass you, or you're seeing, you know, someone, like I said, someone drops a offer and it's sold out in a seconds, right? Like you see that all the time and, or you see, you know, people offering my framework for 30 days and how I grew X, whatever, in a certain amount of time frame. It's all shiny objects. And so don't feel like you're behind because you don't know what journey they went on. You don't know. It's like the iceberg or is the iceberg effect. Am I, I think I'm remembering that correctly. I always forget it. Um, where it's like, you just can't see below. You can only see what's at the surface. So I just wanted to put that reminder out there. All right. How the buyer journey comes into play. So I want to ground ourselves a little bit to really recognize the importance of the buyer journey. And the reason I say this, you may even know this. And if you don't, this will be a great kind of intro course to you. But if you do already, hopefully this is a good refresher. Every stage of the buyer journey influences every marketing activity and where we want to put our time, money, and energy. Whenever I've asked people in the past, you know, what are your goals? They're in a initial response is get more sales, right? Everyone wants more sales. Everyone wants more money. But the trick is, is that you can't just snap your fingers and get sales if you're in it while also building a brand. Of course, there's special circumstances. Maybe you're offering a crazy deal and can just post a lot of ads or whatever. There's some things where it's low hanging fruit and whatnot. However, there is a sensitivity around the buyer journey, I want to remind everyone to keep in mind because the buyer journey is all about trust building. And so building brand awareness, that's trust building. So do not assume that your buyer, just because you have an offer, that your buyer is ready to buy from you. You may have the best offer on the market, but one, if you if the messaging is unclear, if they don't know who you are, if all these other kind of tactics are at play that kind of prevent, you know, like I said, those ingredients from really doing their job, then you have to work on building that trust. And so that's the first step of the buyer journey. 
And then the next is in interest and in engagement building. And so this is where you start to kind of feed them down the funnel a little bit. Once they get more engaged, they get, you know, they start considering who you are. Are you ready to buy from, are they ready to buy from you? Are you the right fit for them? Um, and then start, and that's all the nurturing that kind of comes into play. And then the action, that's where you start pushing the urgency or you give them some relevance or you give them, you basically remove any barriers that make them question why you may not be the right fit for them, why they shouldn't buy for you. So here's an example journey. Obviously, this is very simplified and generalized, but just to kind of put it into a very, very real way, I've seen this time and time again. Your buyer sees your social media posts, but they don't follow you. Your bot, you post multiple times. Consistency is key, right? Buyer sees your company pop up multiple times. Finally, they follow, but doesn't engage. That's typical, right? Like they're still getting to know you. It's kind of like dating. They're like, I'm still feeling you out. I don't really know if I like you yet, um, but I'm cur You've caught my attention enough to where I'm curious to know what you're talking about. Your post, you post about your offer, but buyer does not buy. If that sounds familiar, I would love to know. Um, you know, that's that can feel very discouraging. You have this great offer. Why are my followers not buying? Well, they may not be engaged yet. So you post about your workshop, which is a free value for them. Buyer clicks and signs up for the workshop. You now have the buyer in, engaged. And in an environment where you can keep engaging them versus casting this wide net, where you're hoping that they see it and it's more competitive and you're just kind of playing a numbers game at a certain point. Whereas if you get them engaged, you can, you know that they're somewhat interested in you. You have their direct attention when they open up your emails or are on the workshop or download a resource, whatever that may be. You continue to engage your buyer with emails. Then you post a limited time sale on your offer and your buyer signs up. So that's kind of how, again, a real tangible example of how the funnel comes into play and that buyer journey comes into play. It may take, again, repetition and time for that buyer to trust you. Once they trust you, they engage. Then once they're more, like the more that they get engaged, the more they're learning, to, like you're continuing that trust building. But then it starts to play with desire versus trust. Do I need this now? Or, and, but do I, and do I trust them? Assuming the answer is yes to the trust, the question becomes, do I need this right now? That's where your urgency comes into play because that's when you're like, okay, how do I, that's when your buyer's question, like, okay, I kind of, I want to try this out now, but I don't want to wait anymore. I clearly can't wait because they're often a great deal or whatever that looks like. So I just wanted to lay that out because that is really important when we're talking about how do I, streamline my marketing for one, how do I leverage all these channels I have available to me? And where am I guiding people versus saying, this is how you craft a really great social media post, drop it to your followers. But if your followers aren't engaged, then that really wonderfully crafted social media post is falling on deaf ears. So that's why I bring this up because it's something to always keep in mind. To break it down even further, we want to understand your access points. This is this is why it's critical. And this is what I mean about kind of managing the expectations and, and understanding the different roles that marketing plays within sales. So your brand awareness, like I said, that's all about casting a wide net. That looks at things as like kind of that expanded uh, touch points. So the point, their access points are points of entry for your buyer. They help, they're designed to help hook your buyer and create an environment to fuel engagement. So that's the, that is the goal with marketing. It's to get them into that environment that you can control and own. So, and you can have them directly in front of you, essentially. This is what builds your pool of engaged following. So you want to build trust that comes through press, that comes through social media, that comes through ads sometimes, that comes through Google. You know, if you're showing up with us, uh, search engine optimization, keywords and things like that. So it's the things that have greater reach, but also greater competition. 
So that's why consistency and repetition is so key here because it's like no matter what, the attention span is going to be small. So you want to make sure that you're not losing out of sight, out of mind, right? So you're, you want to make sure that you're always staying kind of top of mind. And even if they're not engaging, that doesn't mean they don't see it. I know a lot of people who, who had some of their biggest buyers come from someone who was just kind of in the shadows, not engaging with their stuff, but they were seeing it. So some, so don't get discouraged if maybe you're working on the brand awareness and you've got the following growing, but people aren't engaging. So this is where we want to flip it and say, how can I get more people to engage so I can predict the, or at least temp, get a temperature check on the following I've invested in building. So this is where you want to do more often opportunity activities. So this could be downloads, workshops, um, free, you know, evaluations, free simulators, quizzes, whatever that looks like something that get that gives them a little bit of value because they want to at this point, they've shown they want to know more a little a little bit more about you. But doesn't commit to you. So they're willing to sign up for that freebie. They're willing to sign up for that newsletter because they like what you're offering, but they're not necessarily, um, you know, ready to buy from you and ready to actually give you their money, but they will give you some of their time. So this is where you get them into that environment that I mentioned, where it's it, you start building that engagement and then that engagement builds into consideration. And like I said, that desire versus trust. This is where more personalization opportunities come into play more special offers. So maybe you're doing emails and you're setting up an automation where someone clicks on your email, but they don't buy. So you have an automation set up that says, Hey, want to make sure you saw this. I'm, I would like to offer you a special, um, special offer for this one thing or whatever. Right. Like, and I'm obviously that just kind of came out of thin air. There's more ways we can massage that idea. But just as an example of this is where that personalization ideas can come into play. And then the action. And this is, like I said, that urgency. You have to remove the barrier as to what makes them keep considering to buy from you versus actually buying. So this could be that urgency, like I mentioned. Urgency is a really great way just because it's, you know, it gives them a time limit to make the decision versus you have all the time in the world and you know, people are more likely to just kind of sit and sit on their hands and not do anything, um, especially if they've got, you know, they're not ready to spend the money right now or whatever that looks like. So that's why that urgency really is helpful there. Uh, but it's not 100% necessary, but you would want some sort of incentive just kind of sweeten the deal a little bit. So how you build your strategy. I like to kind of reverse engineer the buyer journey a little bit, right? Like we know how important building trust is. We know now we have to have the access points and tighten those up as best as possible. We also have to manage our own expectations around the access points, right? If you're focused on social media, do you have a clear journey from your, from your, that initial access point, social media, for your buyer to make a sale. And it, like I said, it can't just be, or shouldn't just be, here's the post that has the information, but do you have the right links? Do you have the right calls to action? Things like that. So this is where the key decision makers really come at play to help you get really clear. What is the offer? And also too, for your visibility, what is the sales goal? So if you wanna sell 10 sessions to something, that is the sales goal, right? And so the offer is the session. So what's the motivation? How can you kind of speed up this process? And this is where it comes into tying into those business objectives is that let's say you want to increase revenue by a certain amount. So you price those sessions accordingly. Um, and so I'll just provide a tangible example, right? Someone who's offering a session let's say that session's normally a thousand dollars they offer it for 500 right they want to and then they increase the amount of sessions that they want to sell that they normally would want to sell to begin with so let's say instead of 10 sessions they want to do 20 sessions that they want to sell so that's where the motivation comes in where you could say okay i want to sell 20 because i want a quick infusion of revenue 
So I'm going to incentivize them by giving them half off the session. And that's just one example. Again, there's lots of different tactics at play. You don't have you don't have to give 50% off. You don't have to provide that quick, timely offer, but you do want to create a little bit of a stack for your offers if it's possible. So what action do they need to take? So beyond just clicking the link in the bio or clicking, you know, register now, be really clear about the clear the calls to action. And also keep in mind what actions are they willing to take? Let's say you're selling a high ticket offer. Are they willing to just drop $2,000 with their credit card right now? Or do they need a little bit of nurturing and maybe direct communication? So this is where you start to keep in mind those access points. If you need to nurture people a little bit more in order for them to set to buy a high ticket offer, then maybe you want to make sure that you have a really strong email sequence set up and that your, your wider net brand build, brand awareness and trust building marketing is going to the email list or is going to the email sequence. You want to first get them, maybe you offer like a freebie or if you're maybe a quick workbook or something that they can have. So that way you get them in kind of that controlled environment so you can keep nurturing them, which will, again, kind of massage them into that sale a little bit. So that's why the access points are, are really good to keep aware, to be aware of in the role that they play because you, because each can have a very valuable role, but you want to make sure that they are, they are, playing the right part versus trying to hold the weight of everything else. And I see that a lot with social media is that again, people are posting and selling through social media, but they're not, they don't have the right support or the right um, safety net, if you will, to keep that nurturing or to respect the buyer journey. Instead, they're just like blasting on social media or even blasting on emails um, without, you know, just saying buy from me, buy from me, buy from me without actually providing, you know, value to the buyer or, or creating um, the right messaging that actually makes them know that this is the right offer for me. So that's where the message comes into play. What is the message? How do they know where that, why that offer is the right move for them? Why, how will they know that they are the right buyer for you? You know, so this is where you really want to get clear. And again, you can't, you can't do that unless you have the answer to who is this for getting really clear on who you want as your buyer is going to help you craft messaging that doesn't feel general when messaging feels too general that's where you start getting bombarded with leads that okay maybe people are interested in this but maybe they're not quality buyers so getting really clear on the type of person you want to attract even if you're not necessarily stating i want a female within you know, this age range or whatever, right? Like it doesn't have to be that specific, but it, you, even if you know, you're, you start crafting because you're uh, crafting the right message because you're getting into the mindset of the buyer because you know them so well, because you've tapped into their mind. So that's really where the trick, quote unquote trick with marketing is that it's all about taking, removing yourself from the equation and getting into the mindset of the buyer and not making that assumption that they know just because you have the best offer and you know the challenge that they go through and this offer is going to be the solution to this problem does not mean that they are able to that they know that it's for them it does not mean that you know they're not getting bombarded with someone else who's saying the same thing so just keeping that in mind other key principles, and this is kind of playing off of what I was saying earlier, of make sure this buyer journey is clear, right? So if you're posting, make sure that they, you know, they know where they're going after. So if you're saying, DM me for more information, what is that journey for them? Make that process very seamless, very clear, remove any barriers, and then know the strengths and weaknesses of the access points. And so this is what I was saying earlier around, you know, that trust building, you're casting this wide net, but it's more competitive. So how, so really that that's where that buyer journey comes into play is, okay, 
it may be more competitive. I may be, it may be a numbers game. I may not be able to capture a lot of people or get direct sales from Instagram. Um, but you know, I may be able to attract people to my email list through this freebie. Right. And so really understanding, but even with the email list, understanding the weaknesses, their emails getting bombarded. We want to make it really clear for them. They may need repetition. So it has to be more than one email, you know, just really getting familiar with where are you putting your content out there and where are you representing your brand and making sure that it all, it all, um, feeds into a really clean buyer journey. Another thing too, because I know, again, like marketing can feel so overwhelming and I'm throwing all these things at you in the sense of decision makers and buyer journey. But remember, it is sim- it is simple and keep it simple. Don't feel like you have to be on everything. Don't feel like you have to have the most complicated email sequence. It's just that repetition that you keep going and, uh, over and over and over again, because again, you're competing for attention. So not to kind of duplicate the same thing and send the same email over and over again, but that's why for events, for as an example, you have a save the date email, you have the launch email, you have the reminder emails, right? As an example. And that's, that's why those types of things exist because it's, it's meant to nurture. It's meant to kind of keep you engaged and keep you informed. But most importantly, you have to do what is feasible. And this is why I say, you know, keep it simple and then build up from there. Don't start, if you're not being consistent with social media right now, don't start posting every single day. Start with what's feasible right now. Is it once a week, three times a week? Start focus on building another engaged environment. So potentially email. How can you potentially get people into that email list? And that could be, like I said, those free workshops or downloadable resources where you know they've got no skin in the game. You they just need to give you your their email. If you have a large following, how can you strengthen loyalty and engagement and make yourself more referable? Right. This is where you can kind of start analyzing, you know, who is my audience? And it doesn't have to just be on social. You you may have a really huge email list or a really big Facebook community or circle community, whatever that looks like. Think about how you can leverage those areas and those groups to make them more engaged, make them more referable, make them more, really strengthen that loyalty, make them more interactive. Um, Dreamers and Doers is a really great example, right? There's Nicole is so interactive. The team's so interactive, right? And I guarantee if they were like, (laughs) I guarantee if they were like, we have a really great special offer, most of the people in the group would go and say, either promote it or say, you know, hey, there's a really great offer, whatever that looks like. And it's because they do such a great job at engaging and being really interactive and it's genuine i say that i'm going to put this asterisk in there is that you have to be genuine with it too so keep that in mind don't feel like if you're like i hate everyone in this group well maybe start over (laughs) maybe start a new group with with people that you resonate more obviously i would imagine that that's not likely in most cases but just wanted to provide that contrast there if you have a small following how can you start to build loyalty and trust? I know I provided a lot of examples and I feel like I'm repeating myself at this point, but this is where, okay, you have a very small following um, on social media or maybe just your network is is small. Well, go to more networking groups, do outreach one, uh, one one-to-one outreaches, um, start posting or start an email newsletter specifically for referral partners, things like that. And this is, like I said, where you have limitations these could be creative opportunities. If you have a really small network, well, maybe you you start a Zoom group every week, every month, you know, where it's a very small, intimate group, and then maybe that grows. So those are just some examples of how you can kind of kind of flip any of the limitations on their head and create some opportunities for you. All right, tactical optimization. So I, like I said, where are you assuming? And these are some very specific, obviously the list can be very exhaustive. So I'm going to choose some that are very, that I've seen firsthand from people and what they do. 
and where they're kind of assuming that the buyer is engaged and ready to buy. If you are just posting a testimonial, that does not guarantee a sale. If you are just saying, here's a quote from someone, there's no other information, that does not guarantee a sale. That's not even sometimes compelling enough for them to click for more. So instead, and again, this is I this is not apply to everyone. Sometimes people are like, I've got a kick-ass testimonial. I'm just going to drop it and people love it. Absolutely, that happens. But in the, when you're in this process of how can I optimize my own marketing and the things I'm putting out there, this is a gr- these are great examples to show you the shifts. So testimonials are valuable examples of proof. And so I'm sure if you've done any, um, if you're familiar with any other marketing strategies, you know, say, uh, providing proof is a huge is a huge piece and kind of shows up in pretty much every, so especially social media strategy, but. Like I said, testimonials alone isn't enough to sell. So maybe instead of just dropping the testimonial, you say, well, this is how I help client the cl- this client go from A to B, and this is their response in return, right? That shows more of a, it's a story. It shows more of a test. It sort of more of a transformation. It get it puts them into the mind of that client, or they can kind of see themselves in that client's shoes and potentially understand how you help them that feels more compelling than just seeing a quote and from someone saying oh my gosh they did it right um another thing is including this is the call to action right just saying link in bio does not guarantee a sale even though that's technically the call to action everyone says make sure your call to actions are clear sure there's not much to argue with that however it doesn't mean that they will interact maybe they'll click on it but maybe they won't go to it maybe they require a little bit more engagement so maybe instead of saying link in bio have an automation set up on your instagram saying you know comment below comment dreamers below and that's when you send a personalized invite to the offer so that's again one example and then again, I'm going to talk about repetition over and over again because it's 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 what matters. Um, passive marketing does not get you anywhere. Just posting once or twice does not help. Um, it's better than nothing, sure, but at the same time, it's not going to move the needle most often. Again, very rare cases if they have if there's a very engaged audience. Um, and sometimes even when there is an engaged audience, you still need to post over and over and over again. So maybe have teasers build up the offer, you know, before they go provide dedicated promotions. Don't just have kind of a quick section under uh, your regular newsletter, have a dedicated email, have a dedicated post, um, you know, all these things that really provide the right spotlight for your offer that you're trying to connect with or trying to promote and then talking about your offer and no buildup so this kind of goes hand in hand with the one I just talked about but if your offer feels very out of the blue it may be a harder sell it may your audience may have a harder time connecting with it so instead I like to hurricane content around the same theme so without even promoting the offer first so let's say you have an event coming up in a week So you spend two weeks prior to that dropping content that's kind of focused around what you're covering the event, but then you, you know, lead up to that and then announce the save the date and then all of these reminder posts about the event. The reason for this is that it helps your buyer kind of associate that same thinking and and give them enough of a runway to see does this make sense for me? Is this like, is this type of thing what I need? And especially if they start engaging in your post, it helps generate consistency. Um, It helps provide that relevance, like I said, and then makes it easier to sell the offer once it comes. All right. So this is how you put it into action. Obviously, like I said, those key principles in the other slide are really important under kind of reverse engineering that buyer journey, getting really clear on what the offer is, what the access points are, the message, the motivation, and who it's for. 
But before you do, just a few reminders here. You know, where could you potentially be blocked in your marketing? And what I said at the beginning, where, you know, sometimes the issue at play is actually a symptom and not, and it's, or is actually a symptom and not, and you have a deeper rooted issue at play. So this is where you can kind of do a little mini audit in your marketing block. Do you have, in your marketing, do you have unclear messaging? Do you have unclear ideal customer profile? Do you have a disjointed journey? Are you kind of coming at people from all different angles, but not kind of streaming, uh, streamlining them into one clear journey? Um, same with the sales blocks, you know, are there deterrents in your sales process? Uh, are there, is the journey kind of passive where you're not really guiding them? You're hoping that they just make the decision for them. People need to be banged on the head over and over and over again. So making sure that you, and they need to be guided as well. So that's why like the passive journey and having that awareness is where am I kind of not holding their hand enough to guide them through the journey and where am I maybe holding their hand too much. So there is a little bit of a balance there, but all mostly passive journeys are not always effective. And then of course, chaotic processes. Do you, and this kind of goes to the deterrence a little bit, is the buyer journey chaotic? Do you have automation set up that aren't really applicable to people who've shown interest, you know, really doing that audit of kind of what does that, buyer experience feel like for them on the other side and then a brand check where could your brand messaging be clearer this uh, again plays into marketing and sales of course but just another just another bit of awareness for you where is there inconsistency with your brand are your offers versatile or stackable are there offers where you can kind of feed one into another um that all kind of comes into play and then again, if you have no budget, do not worry. You can do marketing in a scrappy way, but this is where, you know, make sure it's feasible. Make sure you have the ability to execute it consistent, consistently. Set up systems and processes. Those are going to be your best friend, I promise you. Um, lean into your network, right? Like let's say if you don't have an engaged following and you're building that up still, you know, do one-to-one -one outreach, offer referral fees, you know, host, you know, quick intimate Zoom networking sessions, whatever that looks like, and you can get creative. But most importantly, be intentional. Because like I said, you don't want to be disingenuous about anything, you want to make sure that you are doing things not for the sake of it, but that it's actually going to feed into your bigger picture. So um, and that's what I mean about focusing on the big picture, what is that kind of North Star you're working towards, because all of your marketing should feel like building blocks to it, even as it evolves, right? Like maybe you start a podcast and eventually realize that podcast is no, you're no longer aligned with that podcast. That's okay. That was still a stepping stone towards this bigger picture that you have. Um, so I just say that as one example. And then if you do have where, resources, where can you delegate? Where can you optimize the budget accordingly? Um, what additional access points could you potentially introduce if you do have the, the time, energy, or money to do it? Um, where can you streamline your system? So these are just kind of general awareness checks to help you get, get things in order. I will break it open to questions. And then also too, if you'd like to just connect, but here are some links where you can find me. And of course, within Dreamers and Doers. Yay, Caroline, thank you so much. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we can do q and A. I I mean, we have an intimate group, so People can unmute if they want to. They can drop it into the chat if they're if they're not able to go off mute. So um, we'll just open up the space for for questions. <laughs> You're Thank so you. welcome, Anitra. <laughs> if you have any questions, just let me know or just want to connect. I would love to connect with each of you. Great to see you, Emily. Can I ask a quick question about the marketing momentum call? So yes. I understand that it's targeted, which means it may be for a specific, um, people are coming with something specific. It's a block of time. You want to work through something. What is typically um, the best kinds of situations, problems, issues, concerns to come to you with? And sorry, you know I'm not on video. Oh, no, no worries at all. I'm just glad you're here. Um, no, I would say, yes, it can be targeted if you have something. I think there's only 
we get through a lot in 90 minutes. I do a very deep intake call, but I can spot blocks and patterns pretty much right away. So I'll give you an example of a recent session I've done. And someone was coming where she was just one, she was her biggest challenge, quote unquote challenge that she came with. And this is a great example of, you know, sometimes the symptom is a sign of a deep or sometimes they're the number one challenge is actually a sign of a deeper rooted issue. So she was like, how do I'm struggling keeping consistent with my marketing. Um, and I'm also, you know, I've done some things here and there. I'm, I like to post on Instagram stories and I have this workshop that I'm uh, uh, launching, but not really getting too many bites. Most of them are coming from her, her network. As we started talking, as I was doing the intake, I started to realize she is inconsistent because she doesn't have the right systems to keep her motivated and set up. So we set her up with some processes that would be helpful. I also showed her how she can kind of plan her business around certain milestones or quote unquote marketable moments, as I like to call them, to keep her motivated. So that solves one challenge. But then we started to, as we dug deeper, I asked, you know, what are your email stats, for instance? And she's like, I'm not really getting a lot of hits with my email and I didn't get a lot of hits with my workshop. So we analyzed a few of her emails on the spot. And, you know, I said, okay, you're passively marketing your offers. You're, you're dumping a lot of stuff on top, making the assumption that people are actively engaged with your emails, but you're not actually playing around with different types of formats. You're not pushing that offer more. So that's just a couple of examples. And then we kind of went into some other content. So even if you don't have something specific, you could say it could be general, it could start out general, and then we get to that root. So we really just start drilling in as deep as we need to go to make sure that you have the momentum boost, where we start to kind of, quote unquote, target it or narrow the focus a little bit more is if what's your immediate goal? Are you looking for a boost in sales right now? Well, maybe our solutions have to be tied closely, more closely to how can we get you sales quicker. And that's where we come up with a strategy there. Does that answer your question? It does. It's so helpful. And the examples okay, really made it clear for me. Thank you. Okay, great. All right. Any other questions? Well, listen, if anybody else has questions, please feel free to interrupt me and, and interject, drop them in the chat or unmute. Um, but I just want to say thank you so much, Caroline. We appreciate you so much. This was so wonderful and packed full of tons of information. And I hope you're seeing all the thank yous in the chat for everybody who's just grateful for you to take the time out and share your, your zone of genius. And it's thank you for being so generous and offering ways to get in touch with you post this event. And I know that this will be recorded. So, so many people are going to be able to benefit from this after the live occurrence too. So we just want to say thank you for your time and your energy and your expertise. Um, thank you so much. I love being here and thank you all for being part of this community with me. And I appreciate you taking the time today. Yay. And thank, thank you all for you. It was great to see all of you and I'm wishing you a great rest of your week. And I hope to see you all on a future event very soon. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.